Again, one of these. We are going to get our full blown acceleration here with the Cobalt. It's actually fast. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2007 Chevy Cobalt SS. I'm really excited to actually do a video on this car. I've always wanted to film one of these and Chevy and Murray finally got one traded in. So if you guys are interested in this car, Larry H. Miller Chevy here in Murray, Utah has one. Check out their inventory in the description below. This one is super, super clean. It's got like 50 something thousand miles on it, I believe. But I mean, it's in like pristine condition and it's a Cobalt SS. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a supercharged 2.4 liter four cylinder that goes through a five speed manual transmission. Power outputs are 173 horsepower and then 163 pound feet of torque. If you get like a really new SS Cobalt, it has like 260 horsepower. So this is kind of like the first iteration, but uh, Chevy lets you know that this is supercharged because right there on the top, it says supercharged, but this actually looks really cool under the hood with everything exposed. Now let's go to the front end of the Cobalt SS. So first off, I love the red color on this. Second off, you've got regular halogen lights. You've got the tiny Chevy bow tie. And notice that the grill and everything is not overstated like what you have in a lot of modern cars. Just enough opening there to feed the engine with air. And then you've got a fog light down below. I love the body work here at the bottom. Definitely makes it look kind of aggressive, which is hilarious. But yeah, there's the front end. Now coming around the side here, we've got two 15 millimeter tires wrapped around 18 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear. If you guys are wondering, this is front wheel drive, but it has sport tuned suspension in the front and the rear as stated by Chevy. And then notice you've got your SS supercharged badge right there because again, they're gonna let everyone know that this is supercharged. Giant chrome wheels that are definitely so early 2000s. I know, I think it's hilarious. Like this car is just so awesome. And then notice that, yeah, it's a two door. So here's your full side view and yeah, it's pretty interesting. Ah, we gotta do the hand thing. Ooh. Now let's pop into the back of the Cobalt. So first off, you've got the netting back here. And then <laughs> look at these floor mats. Gosh, I just have like nostalgia in my hand right now. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the opening is pretty interesting. It's pretty small, but then the storage space is pretty good. And well, that's all for the back. So see ya. Now let's go with the rest of the rear. So first off, we've got this ridiculous spoiler, which definitely looks cool. You've got this gigantic antenna sticking up from the back too. The circular taillights, another supercharged badge because everyone has to know and you've got your Cobalt SS badge. And then you just have the singular exhaust tip out the back. It seems like this was trying to really compete with like a Honda Civic. But other than that, that's everything for the rear. Now, yes, we are going to pop in the back. I do want to mention though the seat belt like loop holder. Look how like thin that is to get the seat belt through. And well, let's actually uh, pop in here. So it's kind of a squeeze, but I uh, fit back here. Now, if I sit all the way up, I like actually don't touch the top. But, like my head's against the uh, back window here. And the back of the seats are actually really nice. These seats back here are actually pretty nice. I mean, you've got like full leather, perforated leather there in the center, all that kind of stuff. And uh, this part's all hard plastic though. But yeah, I mean, I fit back here. If I pull the seat back, my legs will cease to exist because you know, you've got to have pretty small legs. But I mean, they do give the back passenger some cup holders. So I guess that's a plus. Now let's go to the door panel here in the front. So first off, you've got leather all around here and then you've got your window controls, your door lock and unlock controls. And we have the Recaro seat. So first off, they say SS on it. And yes, they are Recaro seats. Notice that you've got kind of like the cloth in the center and you've got the aggressive bolsters there. They are manually adjustable. And yeah, I think that's hilarious that it has Recaros. But coming down below, you've got the three pedal layout for that five speed manual. And then yeah, there's one more look before we pop in. Well, of course it has one of these. It's from the uh, mid 2000s. Now here's the steering wheel in the SS. It's just leather wrapped. It actually has a voice command button on it, which I think is pretty neat and cruise control as well. And then notice you've got a light stock and a windshield wiper stock. So, I mean, that part of it feels pretty modern. And then as for the gauge cluster, and you've got the speed and the RPMs and they've got like the red and the white to make it look aggressive and sporty. And then you've got the fuel gauge front and center. And that's all for that part. Oh man, if this radio setup doesn't bring you back, I don't know what does. So yeah, you've got 
analog radio, all that kind of stuff. And then down below, you've got analog climate controls, just a single zone climate, and you've got a snowflake button for the AC. And then here's the five-speed manual transmission. I'll talk about it more when we drive it. But first off, I'm noticing it's actually pretty notchy. And then reverse is pull up on the tab and then pull it over. And then you do get a traditional e-brake. I mean, that's gonna come with any manual car pretty much. Got an SS logo there on the edge of the dash. Pretty normal glove box, it like slammed open, which is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, just notice how like barren the interior looks like. Car interiors have changed so much. Now up top here, we actually get a sunroof in the SS, which uh, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty nice little luxury feature and it does have a lighter colored headliner. Now that we're done going over the interior here on the SS, let's quickly get into the pricing. So. Pricing obviously is gonna be all over the place because there's gonna be cars with tons of miles that are super beat up and there's gonna be cars like this that are really clean. So if you get one that's super beat up, I mean, they're not worth a lot, maybe a few thousand dollars. Something like this, it's really nice. They're actually still worth 10,000 plus dollars. Some of them that are like the newer ones um, with the higher power outputs are going for like 20 grand, <laughs> which is crazy. But I mean, this car's kind of iconic at this point. And that all being said, well, let's take it out and see how it drives. Again, one of these. by visibility here in the cobalt ss so first off visibility over the hood i mean it's pretty normal yes it does come with a boost gauge and when you floor it you can see the <laughs> boost gauge <laughs> oh this car is so funny anyways got visibility through both the mirrors and then throughout the rest of the rear and that all being said well break down first gear let's set off we are setting off here in the cobalt ss and well first off Let's talk about the road noise and the ride quality. So again, this is an older car, so I'm not gonna be too harsh. I'm gonna kind of compare it to other cars that are just as old. Uh, ride quality is actually really smooth unless you go over something and then you feel how stiff this suspension is. Again, sport tuned suspension and they made it really stiff in the Cobalt SS. I'm very interested to see how it rev match downshifts. Throttle is actually pretty blippable. The shifter is very nice. Like it's very easy to tell if you're in gear or if you're not in gear. Yeah, pretty blippable with the throttle. It's actually kind of quick. <laughs> it's actually kind of quick. Oh, this car. I'm sorry if I'm laughing so much, but I didn't plan on reviewing this car today. I just saw it on Chevy's lot and I was like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. And yeah, now we're reviewing it. Ooh, the turning is kind of horrible, to be honest. Uh, the steering is not direct whatsoever. It's somewhat heavy. Uh, and so, yeah, and by the way, if you get what I just memed right there, then uh, thumbs up to you that you are up to date with uh, memes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. It just struggled to go into fourth there for some reason. Like it didn't want to go all the way down, which is interesting. Um, but I mean, I, I think that the engine's probably gonna be the high point of this car, that supercharged 2.4 liter four cylinder and the transmission selector. The transmission selector is really good. It's just so blippable. Like it's, this engine's really nice. And you get a little bit of supercharger wine. I am in love with this car. This is such a weird car, but it is also awesome at the same time. Well, we are going to get our full blown acceleration here with the Cobalt. It's actually fast. Why does this thing exist? It is actually quick. Oh my goodness, this is this is probably the greatest day of filming I have ever had in the history of the channel. This car is actually fun. That's interesting. I mean, like you guys gotta think about it. It's a Cobalt, it's front wheel drive, and it's got a four cylinder, but it's still fun. It's actually a fun car to drive. <laughs> This thing is so weird. And it looks like someone got pulled over, sadly. That's kind of scary because I use this road all the time for my reviews. Doo, 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 doo. Um, but this person getting pulled over aside, this car is such a weird car. But at the same time, it's not. 
Uh, and the reason I say that is it's not a new thing for a car manufacturer to take kind of like an economy car and turn it into something sportier. And that's really what this is, is they've taken an economy car and they've thrown a sportier engine in it, given it a manual transmission, made the suspension extremely stiff, and now we have a sport version. Think nowadays with the Honda Civic Type R, the Ford Focus RS, which has been discontinued, stuff like that. That's kind of what this is. Obviously those are four doors. This is a two door, which is a little bit different. And wait for it. Oh gosh, the suspension is so stiff in this car. Rattles your bones. Um, and it's interesting because the suspension's stiff, but you guys saw earlier, the turn in is not that great with the car. Like I'll take it around another corner right here so you guys can kind of see with the turn in, like it's okay, but it's definitely like the steering is so indirect that it's not great. But this thing's quick, <laughs> it, like, it hauls. This is such a weird, weird car. And I'll be get back with you guys in a second because I gotta get you guys uh, a couple more accelerations before we sum things up. We are going to be getting another acceleration here with our Cobalt SS. Like it's, it's weird that this car's fun to drive and it's quick because it's old and it's front wheel drive. Like it's, it's very strange. This is, it, it's just, it's such a strange car to me. Like I, I don't even know where to put this car mentally because it's, it's this again, like it's this commuter Chevy that has Recaros thrown into it and a manual transmission and then they just slapped a freaking supercharger on their little four cylinder and they're like yep this is a sports car now and we'll get one more acceleration and then i guess we will uh we'll change lanes and then we'll sum things up definitely got some torque steer there <laughs> definitely got some torque steer there uh when i went full throttle there in first gear um, but let's sum things up here with the Cobalt SS. So from a looks perspective, I mean, compared to a lot of modern cars, it actually flies under the radar, doesn't look too crazy. The interior on this car, I mean, again, it's an older car, so it's not necessarily the nicest, but it has Recaro seats. Now the seats themselves are comfortable to sit in, but they don't hold you in place very well. The bolsters aren't large enough to do that. Uh, and they are kind of, it's interesting, they're tight, but they don't come out super far. So it's kind of like an interesting uh, fit with those. And then from the uh, performance, because that's what this car is kind of all about. I love the engine. It's really blippable, especially for an inline four. It does a really good job. Uh, the supercharger, you do get some nice noises from that. It's it's actually quick for what it is. The manual transmission is great. Like you guys can see, it's just super notchy. Going into the gears feels great. Um, the only downside of this car, honestly, is just the steering. The steering's just not direct like modern cars. You do feel that. Uh, but if you can get over the steering, this is a fun car and they're holding their value so well. They're actually kind of going up in value right now. So it's kind of like one of those car investments. Now let's get some things up for our video on this Chevy Cobalt SS. And again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larich Miller Chevy here in Murray for giving me some time with this Cobalt. Check out their inventory link below. I'll see all of you in the next video.